What up everybody? Instructor Beat back again. Today we are starting with our first video on our multiplication playlist. And we're talking about multiplying two and three digit factors by one digit factor using the standard algorithm. So today we're focused on the standard algorithm only. So the objective, right, today we'll be able to multiply two and three digit factors by one digit factor by using the standard algorithm. So basic multiplication vocabulary, right? So the numbers we multiply together, we call each one of those a factor, right? So factors are numbers that we're multiplying together. And the answer to a multiplication um, problem is called the product. So are any digits we're multiplying or any numbers we're multiplying are called factors. And the answer to a multiplication problem is called a product. Now there's something very special about multiplication and multiplication has a couple different rules that we call properties, but the one we're focused on right now is the commutative property. Factors can switch places and the answer will still be the same, right? So three times four is 12. And if I switch my factors and make it four times three, my answer is still 12. The commutative property says basically it doesn't matter which way you write the factors, as long as you're multiplying, your answer will be the same. We know that multiplication is really just repeated addition, right? And so re multiplication is kind of a shortcut. Instead of adding over and over and over again, we just do multiplication. So if we wanted to multiply 21 times 4, which really could say 21 groups of 4, we could draw 21 groups. Whew, man, my hand hurts from writing that fast. I am tired. And in each group, we would have four. Whew, man, that is tough. And we could add those up, right? And we know that that would be um, 84, okay, if I added those all together. Or we could just multiply and do our standard algorithm and do 21 times 4. So let's take a look at that. So how do I multiply big numbers? Okay, so the first step is you want to line it up starting with the decimal, um, making sure your place values are lined up. Now that will kind of change as we get into bigger numbers, but this is a good, um, I mean into decimals, but this is a good place to start. We always multiply from right to left. And then we want to circle what we carry. In other words, for carry is regroup. And we want to add it to our next place value after we multiply. So I don't really want to draw 34 groups of 8 here. So I'm going to use my standard algorithm, right? And so I'm going to do line it up with my ones place. And my decimal would be here if I had one, right? And I want to multiply this. And I want to go from right to left. So 8 times 4 is 32, right? And so if I write that over here just to look at it for a second, we want to keep the 3, and we have 3 groups of 10 that we want to regroup, and some people call it carry, over next to our 1's place, right? So our 30, we want to regroup 30 over here, which is really a 3 in the 10's place, and our 1's place would stay right here. And then we're going to multiply and then add. So 8 groups of 3 would be 24, plus 3 would be 27, Right, and really that's 8 times 30, which is 240, plus 3, which is 270. So we have 270 here, and then our 2 from our first one. So using standard algorithm, 34 times 8 is 272. So let's take a look at another one. And so this one right here, I have 4 times 562, right? And so commutative property says that 562 times 4 would be the same thing. So when I multiply, I like to put my bigger numbers on top. So I'm going to have 562, okay, times 4. And I like to line it up with my, um, with my decimal, my ones place. And I always just go from right to left. So 4 times 2 is 8, right? And then 4 times 6 is 24. Really, that's 24 groups of 10, which means I need to regroup my 20 or my 2 over my 100's place, because that would really be 200, and then put my leftover 4 down here, right? So I regroup my 2, put my leftover 4 down here, and now when I multiply the next place value, 4 times 5, which is really 4 times 500, but 4 times 5 is 20. I add my 2 groups to make it 22, and my answer would be 2,248. Or in math terms, you would say the product is 2,248. So here I have 635 times 6, 
right? And so I'm going to line it up, and I'm um, you're going to try it first. So pause the video and try it. When you get done with that, after I go over it, if you got it right and you feel 100% confident, you can go ahead and stop the video. Or if you don't have it yet, let me move this. Okay. Um, you can have more practice. Now, notice I said not yet. I didn't say you didn't get it. I just said not yet, right? We want to have a growth mindset, and you can keep watching for our next practice problem. So, pause the video, and then I'll go ahead and solve it. So, hopefully, you just pause the video, right? So, we have 300, uh, sorry, 635, and I want to multiply that by 6. I'm going to go right to left. 6 times 5 is 30. So, I'm going to regroup my 310s over here. I like to circle it. That just, me, that just helps me so I never forget to add it. Sometimes I used to forget to do that. And then I circle it and it's kind of an extra reminder. So then I'd have 6 times 3 is 18 plus 3 would be 21. Circle what I carry. 6 times 6 is 36 plus 2 would be 38. And my product should be 3810. So let's take a look at our next you try problem. If you're confident, go ahead and stop and work on whatever your teacher would like you to work on. If you need an extra problem, go ahead and keep watching. So I have 8 times 398 right here. So I'm going to do my commutative property. I'm going to write my bigger number on top just because it makes it a little bit easier for me. Okay, and I'm going to line that up. Um, hopefully you have tried this already. If not, go ahead and pause the video and you can try it. So I have 8 times 8 is 64. I'm going to regroup my 6 groups of 10 over here. I'm going to put my leftover 4 down here. 9 times 8 is 72 plus 6 is 78. Remember, you always multiply, then add. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 7 is 31. So my answer is going to be 3,000, sorry, my product is going to be 3,184. Again, if you got it right and you're feeling confident now, you can stop, or you can always watch an extra problem. So here's our last one. So go ahead and pause the video and try it out, and then push play, and we'll see how you did. So hopefully you just paused it and tried it. So we have 873 times 3, right? And so I have 3 times 3, which is 9. 3 times 7, which is 21. So I'm going to regroup my two groups of 10 that I had over my hundreds place and put my leftover one down here. And then 3 times 8 is 24 plus 2 is 26. And so your answer or your product should be 2,619. So hopefully you uh, liked what you saw. Hopefully you learned a little bit. You please check us out on YouTube at at Instructabeats Official. Um, or you can check us out on Instagram at at Instructabeats. This, of course, goes along with our standard algorithm song, which we hope you'll check out. If you want to see more on why multiplication works in a conceptual part of it instead of just the standard algorithm, you can check out our videos on partial products and the open um, array method. Instructabeats, out!